Good afternoon everybody, Calm Biker here and it's the 1st of January 2019 Happy New Year and look at it, it's amazing I was sat home doing some work and uh, I stood up and looked out the window and I thought well that looks nice and I looked at the road and I thought that looks dry and I looked at my screen and thought it's 12 o'clock I can get away with a half hour lunch break I'm taking the bike out. So my first ride of the year is on the 1st of January and it's lovely. I'm a bit nervous. Uh, a couple of weeks ago I sprayed the bike with ACF 50 and I think I used a little bit too much. I can really smell it at the moment. And lots of bits of the bike are extra shiny. In fact the bit there is quite wet because I used uh, my compressor to spray it and it was my first attempt with my new gun. And it was probably a bit generous. So a little bit nervous of uh, ACF drippage onto the tyres which is why I'm taking it a bit easy and not leaning onto it in the bends where it's a bit damp. Don't want to lean on the tyres yet. Though they are coming off shortly, I've just had delivery of my brand new uh, Michelin Road 5s to give them a try. Looking forward to them, that's my Christmas present to myself. Anyway, I thought while I was out I might as well do a, a vlog and uh, it's putting together two things that I've been reading about. I've been reading a book over Christmas that's all to do with uh, psychology and morality and things like that. Um, and then I was also reading an article um, and I can't remember which website it was on, it might have been MCN or something like that, Motorcycle News or one of those kind of things, Visor Down. And it was about automatic driving cars, you know, self-driving car whatnots. And it was actually this article, it was a chap who had done a video and shown that his Tesla could not see a motorbike that was right in front of it and just off to the right. It says about if you were filtering past, it just wouldn't be able to see you. It either didn't see the motorbike or it thought it was a car that was a long way away. Either way, not good. But then my mind started to put these things together, as it will, and I started wondering about self-driving cars and what will happen when they do inevitably hit the roads in a big way rather than just the kind of autopilot Tesla thing where you're not really supposed to let it do it. If ever there was a legal fudge, that's one, isn't it? Uh, we'll give you a self-driving car. You've, you've got to actually keep track of it though in case it crashes, it's not our fault. But I was thinking about the morali morality, the morality side of things. What happens in that situation where there's got to be a crash? And the book I was reading was discussing something about um, how human morality works and what kind of 95% of the people across all religions, countries, creeds, belief systems, whatever it might be, what 95% of people tend to stick with about the same thing in morality, I keep saying morality, morality. And their example was to do with a train that was guaranteed to crash but you can very easily change it with a couple of little tweaks into a car, a self-driving car that's going to crash and what that means in terms of that their morality as I'm going to from now on call it. And it's, if, you, if you convert the example imagine that you're, you've got a self-driving car and we're, we're talking about proper futurism now not Tesla, there's no steering wheel there's no way for the person to take charge. The computer, and ultimately the programmers I guess, or the AI if it's never been programmed, if it's just been left to statistical AI, has to make the decision of what to do. So imagine it's going along a straight road and there are five people crossing that road who haven't seen the car, because it's super silent electric they're not going to see it either. So the car's got to make a decision about what it's going to do. And imagine on that road, there is a, a little side road, maybe. Like a slip road type thing. Or perhaps one of those escape roads for trucks on steep hills. But there's a little side road. So if you're driving down that road, and you know you're going to hit these people and your brakes have gone, the vast majority of people will make the decision to go off into that side road that escape road and avoid it and maybe that means crashing the car but maybe be able to crash it at a slower speed 
Now, you would imagine that a, an AI car could probably make that decision too. It'd probably say, I'm not going to crash into those five people, I'm going to turn off in this side road. Um, now then, the next question is, what if there are people in that side road? And you've got enough time, and the AI's got enough time, to make a decision. Now you might look and say, well there's five people on the main road, there's two people on the side road. So, if I've got time to make that kind of decision, we've got to kind of assume you have, and the AI should be quicker than a people, shouldn't it? Then you might make the decision, morality, 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 I'm saying it again, morality should say that the lives of two people are worth less than the lives of five. It's sad, but it's the case, and if those are the only two options, you and the computer should probably make the decision to head off down that side road and hit the two people rather than the five. So that seems reasonable enough. So that then leads in this morality book to say, well, if that's the case, five people versus two, well, let's make it even easier. Five person people on the road versus one person on the side. You'll go for the one because the overall damage is less. Also, you know, pretty easy so far. Then comes the next one. What if there's five people on the main road and they're just past the side road which immediately joins back onto the main road and there's one person on the side road but they're quite fat and heavy. So if you went onto the side road you're still going to hit the five people anyway but you might hit the one which slows you down enough to not kill the five. Now the morality gets a bit trickier. Because you're not really making a decision to kill one set of people over the one person, or one person over the five people. You're kind of using that person as a tool to slow down. Now it gets trickier, and this is where morality across the world starts to slip a bit, and people aren't quite sure what to do. do you know, should I use that one person as a tool to slow my car down in order to minimise the damage to the five? Now the AI is going to have to make that decision as well, which is pretty tricky. So hopefully it's already kind of getting you to the position that I'm thinking about the AI, AI of I don't want to be that programmer having to make that, that programming decision. But you can take it and the example for morality takes it one step further and says what actually if there isn't uh, a side road at all, there's just one road and the car's coming down it and it can't deviate and there's five people on the road and it's going to hit them because it's got no brakes so we're all you know in that same territory and you're not in the car, you're stood on a bridge and on that bridge stood just near you is a big fat person who you have calculated because you're some kind of mathematical genius that if you were to throw them off the bridge in front of the car then you'd probably manage to stop the car thus saving the five at the expense of one. Now the maths is the same you're killing one person to save five so the maths is the same but the morality kind of starts to change. Well I hope it does, it does for me <laughs> and again it does for 90 to 95 percent of the people around the world Whereas before, when it was the one on a side road that you were going to hit and kill, now it's one that you are actually killing, sending to their certain death to act as a tool to try and stop a car that would otherwise hit five people. Now most people's morality switches the other way and says, no, that's not fair. Actually, the natural position we're in of the five people getting hit is the one that has to happen and we don't sacrifice one person to use them specifically as a tool when they weren't in harm's way in the first place now all these things as I say need to be decisions that an AI car would have to make and I think it's um, I think it's a fascinating topic a fascinating topic for discussion from the morality or morality or morality point of view but also fascinating and terrifying from the point of view of the people who develop the software the, for the people who manufacture the cars and even for the person who sat 
in the car that has no steering wheel and no ability to be redirected or stopped by the person inside but the person who is inside who has to watch as the car approaches those people that it's inevitably going to kill or seriously injure. Anyway I thought that was a, an interesting topic for Happy New Year and all that. <laughs> Let me know what you think in the uh, comments. Thanks for watching everyone. Ride safe and I'll talk to you all again soon. And now we have to get this bike back because I'm uh, definitely halfway through my lunch break. I suppose thinking about it, there's no real need to develop software for the throwing somebody off the bridge scenario. Unless of course the computers are all networked together and using each other's sensors and whatnot, and maybe one of the cars going across the bridge would see the developing problem and just nudge the big guy over the fence. <laughs>